by God's grace, we are in the city for good. Welcome to worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We especially welcome guests and visitors who are with us, perhaps for the first time in this virtual space. We're glad you're here. We're glad that everyone is gathered in this virtual space today. Please take a moment to light a candle if you have that in your worship space. As well, later in our service, we will offer up the prayers of the people, so please type your prayer requests into the Facebook feed. Today, we begin a practice that we will likely continue into the future, a question of the day. So each Sunday, we will lift up a question that we invite you to consider, and then if you feel brave, you may type your answer to the question into the Facebook feed as a way to um, more concretely participate in the worship experience. Today, our question is um, up on the screen there, um, but it is, what's a time you have changed your mind or changed your perspective on something important to you? What's a time you have changed your mind or changed your perspective on something important to you? If you do share your um, response to this question, we will lift that up during Faith in Motion later in the service. Now we join in singing, In Christ There Is No East or West. Your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We sing together our gospel acclamation. to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. 
But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was instantly healed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In a movie that I saw for the first time in the theater when I was uh, a teenager, so a movie of the, I think it was the late 80s or the early 90s, was called City Slickers. You may have seen it with Billy Crystal. One of the, in one of the scenes of the movie, Billy Crystal's character says to his friend, Phil, um, who, Phil has really struggled. Um, Phil lost his job, he had an affair, um, his marriage is ending because of it. Um, things are not good for Phil. But um, Billy Crystal's character says to his friend Phil, man, your life is a do-over. It's just a do-over. He said, remember when we were kids and we would play baseball together and somebody would knock a ball into the trees and we'd all yell, do-over, do-over. He said, your life is a do-over. You get to do it over. Today we hear a text from the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus does something that doesn't quite jive with who we know Jesus to be. And it helps me reflect on the times in my life when I've wanted to do over something. And I ask the question today, what's a time you have changed your mind or changed your perspective on something important to you. Because so often when we do change our perspective, we look back on what we thought before, or maybe what those thoughts led us to do, and we are filled with shame. Filled with, like, we just want to cringe. I'll share during the sermon a time that is tr was true for me in my life. Um, but we look back and we're like, oh, I can't believe I ever thought that or I ever did that. But the good news is that we get to do it over, right? We get to grow and change. Um, every morning um, is a new day. So I am curious if I could get my um, production assistant here <laughs> to uh, look and see in the feed if we have anyone who shared what's a time they have, you have changed your mind or changed your perspective. No one has shared anything no yet. No one has shared anything yet. You know, I wonder if we didn't have enough time to even think about that. But I invite you to um, think about that as I share today's sermon and as you go through your week. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's what Jesus says to the woman pleading for Jesus' mercy on her daughter who is tormented by a demon. Not one of Jesus' disciples or any Jewish onlooker is surprised by Jesus' words, for she is a Canaanite woman. Jewish-Gentile relations in the first century Mediterranean world do not allow Jesus, a Jewish man, to speak to a Gentile, especially a woman. When Jesus says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, he equates Jews to God's beloved children, but Gentiles to dogs. 
not lovable pets of the home as they are today, but wild dogs, animals who get in the way. When the unnamed woman first calls out to Jesus, he ignores her entirely. Again, Jesus' disciples are not surprised by Jesus' silence, for any conversation would violate social boundaries, but they are annoyed by her persistent call for mercy. When finally Jesus addresses her, he says, or I guess he, he says this to the disciples, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right and good, Jesus, the disciples probably think. She is not an Israelite. She is not a sheep of this shepherd, Jesus. What do we do with Jesus' harsh words? Three times he insults her, belittles her, demeans her. This is not the Jesus we know and love. Even though she respects him, even though she calls him Lord, Son of David, even though she implies he has the power to rid her daughter of a demon, implies he can exert power over natural elements. Even though at the end of this story, Jesus recognizes her faith, a declaration that he makes only twice in the Gospel of Matthew, the other time when the centurion, who's incidentally also a Gentile, asks for the healing of his servant. What do we do with Jesus' harsh words and even harsher silence? Of course, biblical commentators aplenty provide solutions, suggest Jesus is vocalizing the prejudices of those around him to call out their sin, suggest the point is that Jesus finally heals the Canaanite woman's daughter and we can ignore the rest, suggest that Jesus is illustrating his own point from the previous teaching. If you have your Bible open, you'll see that he preached about uh, what defiles us and it's what comes out of our mouth. We seem eager to rescue Jesus from his historical context. Understandably. But I wonder, truly, if the Canaanite woman helps Jesus understand his own ministry with greater clarity. Seven chapters earlier, he responds to the Gentile centurion's request for healing, but perhaps a Gentile woman is just one step too far. Perhaps she helps him see the limits of his own ministry and then helps him overcome them. While I would grieve the limits of Jesus' own understanding, I would rejoice that Jesus, once called out, recognizes his limits and chooses to grow in openness, love, and grace. This bodes well for us, followers of Jesus, followers of the one who could grow, even in his divine capacity, if Jesus, Lord, Son of David, can err and then grow and change, so can we. But first we name our errors, what we'd like to do over, without trying to explain it away, like the commentators of plenty would like to do. In 2001, I served for a year in Lutheran Volunteer Corps and worked at a shelter for people experiencing homelessness and illness on the west side of Chicago. Entering Interfaith House was like entering a different world for me, one where my experience of life, instead of normative, was the exception. Me, a little white girl from small town Minnesota who had just graduated from an expensive liberal arts college. Most of my coworkers, black folks from the south and west sides of Chicago, who joked that they were nearly homeless, the shelter paid so poorly. One day, I ended up in the office of the program director. I was there because I had been accused of being racist. 
wanted to report the ugly words of my coworkers and be assured that I was just fine. The program director asked me, do you think you're racist? I told her no, but I had that uncomfortable feeling, maybe you had it, that I couldn't quite put my finger on, the feeling that seemed to indicate I wasn't quite telling the truth. We all have things we'd like to do over. For me, at that moment with the program director in 2001, I wanted to take back the racist things I had said and done. And still to this day, I wish I could see and understand more fully my privilege, my white privilege. This morning, our errors are areas of growth, personally or systemically, may feel overwhelming. But the good news demonstrated by Jesus is a capacity to grow, to grow in openness, love, and grace. We are not forever stuck in the place where we currently stand. We get to have do-overs. We get to change our minds. We get to let go of old, unhealthy patterns. We get to believe new things about ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. We get to wash our face each morning and remember our baptism. Remember that we are God's beloved and whatever has gone before is no longer. Today is a new day. And if we would rather stubbornly hang on to the things that trip us up and make our lives harder and the life of our neighbor harder, if we won't allow ourselves to be helped or listened to, the really good news is that God in Christ meets us with dignity, compassion, and grace. For Jesus grows through his encounter with the Canaanite woman. She helps him understand the height and width and depth of his mission that included not just people like him, Jewish people, but Gentiles as well. Women bold enough to cry out for mercy on behalf of their daughters. And it's not that he deigns to heal her daughter, not that he shows her pity. He not only preserves her dignity and shows her grace, but in the end, Jesus praises her faith. Jesus met a woman who needed him, and he met her where she was. They both walked away changed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, O oh God, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We give you thanks, O oh God, for Jesus, who walked a path humble enough to allow for transformation. Give us, your church, that same openness to transformation. Embolden us to name our ugliness and surprise us in opportunities to grow. In this election season, give us patience, compassion, and discernment as we encounter views different than our own. Bless our efforts towards love and justice and peace, especially for leaders in government at all levels, in our schools, in our hospitals, and in our churches. Provide wisdom and uncanny knowledge. In this, give us your peace, O God, and strengthen us in hope. Thanks, 
so, God, for the healing you provide, for the many ways you empower us to use our gifts for the sake of the common good. Heal those among us who are ailing, especially Stephanie, Lutea, John, Javon, and little Everdeen. Comfort those who are grieving, especially the family and friends of Cindy Herman. Strengthen those caring for family members and friends, and protect those among us without homes in these hot days. Protect and strengthen all teachers, students, and parents as students and teachers go back to class in many and various forms. Provide wisdom to parents who are managing work and school and basic care for their children. Make a way for each family. In this, give us your peace, O oh God, and strengthen us in hope. Give us your peace, O oh God, and strengthen us in hope. and safety as Ursula goes through medical visits this week. God, we lift up Ursula. We pray for a shield of protection around her as she goes for medical visits this week. We pray that all would be well and also that in um, going to the clinic clinics um, that she would be kept safe from infection. John Erickson asks for prayers of healing and comfort for Judy as she continues treatments. God, we lift up Judy praying for wellness, for healing, for relief from any pain, for relief of anxiety, that she might know your peace. Give us your peace, O oh God, and strengthen us in hope. in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. 
And we, yes, we're saying <laughs> peace with the three people who are here. Um, thank you for the ways that you support the ministries of grace. And there are many ways through your presence, through your participation in serving here. We also give thanks to God for your financial contributions. Um, again, you can share through the website, through your bank or credit union, simply putting your check in the mail. Also, when you come to the drive through and walk up Holy Communion on Sunday mornings from 9 to 9.30, you are welcome to bring your offering then as well. We, um, we sing or all share today a hymn called There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. The text is older, but the music was composed by a gentleman named uh, Calvin Hampton, a church musician who specifically composed this tune for the words that were composed earlier. Um, they're about the wideness of God's mercy, of course. Hampton was a gay man who died of AIDS in 1984, a man who knew the grace of God even as the church struggled to accept him. I feel like this is a very fitting musical setting for this day uh, when we read the story of Jesus' encounter with the Canaanite woman.
let us pray our prayer of discernment. Spirit of God, grant us the virtue of elasticity. Make us pliable and playful. Stir our minds with your sacred spoon to awaken the fermentation of ideas. Help us, your church, embrace a spirit of adventure as we move into your future. Gift us with wide open hearts and minds eager to embrace your leading, wherever, however, and whoever that includes. Amen. Again, we're so grateful for everyone's presence virtually today. If you are a first time visitor, we're grateful. We hope that you'll join us uh, in person when we begin in person worship again, which we pray will be soon, but we do not know uh, the date. Heads up, the City of Phoenix is looking for feedback on their plan regarding homelessness. Please check out the information in your bulletin. Remember, we are looking for musicians to help provide music in worship this fall. Please email Brandon at the email in your bulletin if you're interested. If you are a member of the Praise Band and would be interested in providing music leadership, please email Chad. Heads up, opportunities abound for learning and serving. Check out your bulletin. Uh, to learn about Diaconia, this year's Confirmation Among Local Lutherans registration, ways to volunteer in the community and here at Grace, an upcoming discussion on the movie The Hate You Give, which is actually tomorrow evening, so uh, you're invited to watch the movie, which is available on streaming platforms, and then um, to participate in the discussion, and a series of video interviews with leaders in the Phoenix area on aspects of our common life hosted by Arizona Interfaith Power and Light. Remember, we are offering drive through and walk-up Holy Communion each Sunday morning from 9 until 9.30. As ever, please join us for Grace Time Bible Study, Prayer Group, and Coffee Hour. Check out The Glow Show on Apple Podcasts and Pentecost Pause on Facebook Live. Fly continues each Saturday at 4 p.m., and our community building goal is weekly check-in chats. Remember, if you, I really want you to hear this, if you have a medical need and your medical provider does not provide uh, televisits, we have a friend of Grace who is a primary care physician who is happy to meet with you and it is completely free. So please um, let me or Adrian in the church office know if you'd like to schedule an appointment. Remember through Th Phoenix Fusion, I am offering a class called Advocacy 101 on Thursday evenings. There are two more weeks left. The link is in your bulletin. Are there other announcements? Please stand wherever you are for the final blessing. Go with the strength you have. Go simply, lightly, gently in search of love, and the Spirit go with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. We sing together, Lord of all nations, grant me grace.
Spirit and filled with the joy of Christ, go in peace and serve the living God. Thanks be to God.